Hello, my name is Nathan Mackerel, a first year student studying business management at Leeds Beckett. In this vlog, I'll be analysing my own consumer behaviour using a couple of different theoretical marketing approaches when it comes to some purchases I've made recently. But first, what exactly is purchasing behaviour? In my own words, this relates to the behaviour of customers and consumers when it comes to them buying products or services and why they buy these products or services. Furthermore, as Michael Baker says in his book titled Marketing, purchasing behaviour is the study of processes involved when individuals and groups select, purchase, use or dispose of products, services, ideas or experiences to satisfy needs and desires. Moving on, the theory of planned behaviour is one way to analyse why a customer might choose to buy a product or service. In Paul Baines and Chris Phil's Fundamentals of Marketing, it explains how intentions turn into a behaviour based on three things their own attitude towards behaviour, how subjective norms in society perceive that behaviour, and finally the perceived behavioural control, which means how easy or difficult actually performing the behaviour would be. To link this to a purchase I've made myself, I once bought a brand new shirt from Fred Perry. My attitude towards his behaviour was that I had already worn Fred Perry shirts previously and I knew I was happy with the product. I also hadn't bought any new clothes in a while, but I knew I wanted a high quality brand shirt. When it comes to the subjective norms of this behaviour, the Fred Perry brand itself is quite famous and known as a high quality product. Perhaps because their products are quite pricey. In addition to subjective norms leading me to think that Fred Perry was a fashionable, unliked brand of clothing, the perceived behavioural control also meant that buying the shirt was easy. This is because ordering online from a computer takes a matter of minutes. All of these factors added together create my intention, which further creates the behaviour of me then purchasing the shirt. But when it comes to a consumer buying a product, they will, as it says in Brasington and Petit 2014, find themselves in one of three different buying situations. The first being regular everyday to day purchases like groceries, which lie under routine problem solving. The next being less frequent purchases like buying a new pair of trainers, which lie under under limited problem solving. And finally, extended problem solving, which relates to extremely uncommon purchases such as a brand new car or house. Now the second theory, which relates to why I've bought a particular product, is the B2C business to customer decision making process. This is a six step theory by Gosney and Richardson in 2010 that explains why a customer might decide to buy a product. The first step is problem recognition, which occurs when a consumer recognises they have a problem that they need to buy a product to fix this. For me, this problem stemmed from me needing to buy a quick ready meal for tea as I hadn't eaten much throughout the day. I had to be out to see family soon and I didn't have enough food in the house to make anything. This buying situation would fall under routine problem solving as it is the type of purchase I would make most days. The second step is the information search, where I as the consumer must gather information on how to fix the problem. For me, I was at home and I knew a few shops nearby to me that I thought would help fix the problem, but I still googled shops nearby so that I knew every option available. The next step is information evaluation, where a consumer will evaluate their options based on the information they have. The options I had come up with was to either get a ready meal from Aldi, Sainsbury's or the Corp. This and the second step have individual internal influences such as personality, attitude and motivation which could mean a difference in effort towards the information search and an impact on the information evaluation. The next stage is the purchasing decision which is when the consumer has finally looked at all of their options and decided which one is the best option for them in that situation. In my case I decided to opt for Sainsbury's over the Corp and Aldi. This was because Aldi, although a good value for money from previous experience, didn't look very appealing as the meals were basic and I also didn't mind spending a little bit more money for a meal. Furthermore, the co-op may have had a higher quality of food but the shop itself is, I know, is small and I wouldn't have many different options to pick from. Sainsbury's, however, have a large... Sainsbury's, however, being a large, high-quality supermarket, I knew it would have a variety of options compared to co-op and Aldi and also I knew that the food tasted good. The fifth process is the post-purchase buying evaluation, which is where the consumer decides whether they would make this purchase again based on if the purchase was a good or bad choice. Personally, I feel as though my purchase was a good one as I ate all of the meal, which obviously meant I enjoyed it. And also, the meal wasn't a basic bangs and mash from Aldi, and was instead a taste of difference on Moussaka. 
The final process is the feedback prior to next decision, which is basically any feedback left on purchasing of that product, which could be verbal communication with a friend about how happy they are with a purchase, or even a blog on social media where someone might review an item or clothing they've bought. For me, I didn't leave any sort of blog or review of the item. I just told my friend who was with me at the time that I had enjoyed the meal a lot and suggested it to him for next time. So that was a look into my purchasing behaviour. I hope you enjoyed the video and thanks for watching.